coming you know, straight into business. Stephen Carroll's joining us on set. Starting here in France, there's been a big update in the last hour or so. This is on the impact, isn't it, uh, Stephen, of the coronavirus pandemic on the economy? That's right, and it's coming from France's National Statistics Office. They say the bounce back in the period from July to September won't be as strong as they previously expected. So after a slump of almost 14% between April and June, the economy will bounce back by 17% in this quarter, less, as I said, as they previously expected. They're also expecting just very little growth in the last three months of the year. Overall, the French economy will finish the year 9% smaller than when it started. Now, restrictions related to the coronavirus pandemic continuing to hurt some sectors, aviation and events, among others. On the jobs front, INSEE says it expects the unemployment rate in France to be 9.5% by the end of the year, dipped under 9% earlier this year. And Stephen, all of that comes as well, doesn't it, uh, despite some encouraging figures on spending in France in August. So consumer spending is the most important driver of the economy and the government had been worried that people might be afraid to spend once lockdown was lifted. But the amount of value-added tax the government collected last month was up, showing that consumers did loosen the purse strings during their summer holidays. It's not clear how long that might last, though, as Camille Nedelec now explains. Amid cloudy skies comes a bit of good news. VAT receipts jumped in August to 700 million euros, 5% higher than last year. That's an indication that consumer spending has snapped back to normal after suffering a huge drop during France's national lockdown. August is also the peak of France's summer holiday season. This hotel was full for five weeks in a row and business is up 30%. Les clients ben, réservent plus facilement des transats. Aller faire euh, des petits tours en pédalo, euh, manger des glaces. Donc, il euh, n'y avait pas cette, euh, cette retenue. Spending has been boosted by holidaymakers eager to make up for a disappointing spring. C'est un peu un, un exutoire. On se dit, bon, on se fait plaisir un petit peu, on l'a mérité. Donc, euh... Along with the holiday spending, as people on the whole spend more time at home, items such as laptops, furniture and DIY tools have had a boost. The uptick in spending is a vital bit of good news for an economy that's in the doldrums. Pendant le confinement, les entreprises ont accumulé des pertes euh, dans leurs comptes. Euh, si elles produisent plus demain parce que les ménages consomment l'épargne qu'ils ont accumulée, eh ben, ça sera un moyen de rattraper les pertes qu'elles ont accumulées pendant euh, le confinement et d'éviter qu'elles soient euh, forcées de licencier. But not all industries are enjoying the summer boost. The culture, air travel and fashion sectors are all still feeling the pinch. And once the holiday turn has faded, so might the shopping spree, as consumer confidence depends on France's ability to keep its coronavirus outbreak in check. Let's take a look at what's happening on the markets next for you. European shares starting the day up, although not by much. Gains across London, Paris and Frankfurt, but just London's FTSE 100 up by uh, four-tenths of one percent there. A similar picture in Asian trading. Uh, markets there also trading up. Fairly modest moves, though, across the board. On the currency markets, we're keeping an eye on what's happening with the British pound today as those Brexit negotiations resume. The pound weaker against the dollar and the euro. Fears that a trade deal may not be reached in time by the end of the year and that the UK could break the terms of the withdrawal agreement uh, weighing on the value of the pound. We tend to see re movements related to Brexit when we talk about market reaction on the pound. So, uh, of course, lots of people watching there very closely to see what will happen. Yeah, see what happens at the end of the week. Now, the move to uh, working from home, inspired by the coronavirus pandemic, of course, is having a real impact. This is on demand for office space. So Google has scrapped plans to rent massive new offices for its workers in Dublin. It was in talks to lease almost 19,000 square metres of office space in a new development in the city, but changed its mind, according to Bloomberg. This, as the company told employees, they can work from home until at least the middle of 2021. The tech giant employs over 8,000 workers at its European headquarters in the Irish capital. Let's swivel it around, because a very different point of view. This is on the subject of working uh, from home. This is from the boss of Netflix. So Reid Hastings has been speaking about this to the Wall Street Journal. He says that his workforce will be back in the office as soon as a majority of them can be vaccinated. The Netflix CEO saying that debating ideas is more difficult with people working from home, as they experienced during the pandemic. Hastings says, I don't see any positives. Not being able to get together in person, particularly internationally, is a pure negative. 
I've been super impressed with people's sacrifices. Now, Netflix, of course, has been one of the big winners of the pandemic with a record jump in subscriptions. More people watching uh, during the lockdown in particular, but not so for its employees, it seems. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether that carries on, of course, once everybody's watched the programmes they want to watch. <laughs> but we'll see. Stephen Carroll with the Business on France 24.